Welcome back everybody. I've tried to shoot this video like uh, at least three times, maybe four times. Each time it's been way too dark. So I've got some lights today. I'm actually not quite done what I'm doing, which is a good place to to show you the various phases of what we're doing down here um, in the basement. So let's go check it out. So I think the last time we were down here, you know, we had the just the straight up basement walls, right? Um, with the Intello coming out the bottom and some plastic down around the edge coming under from under the slab. Um, then what we've been doing is putting this three inches of foam here up against the wall, gluing it to the wall and sealing all of these little uh, concrete form ties so that they won't continue to rust or deteriorate. And then this will get wrapped with the Intello, taped top and taped there at the bottom, tying the whole thing together. Now this is a small section of the stud wall that's gonna be built. This plywood here uh, is just screwed in a couple of places. It's gonna slide out so that we can get back there with drywall. We need to fireproof all of this because um, otherwise this foam can be pretty flammable or at least it melts under a flame and so like um, it's fire code I guess. Um, and that's why the stud wall is getting built to insulate behind it and hang drywall. Really it's about the drywall but since we're building the wall you might as well insulate it and that's what that's what we're doing. Um, so you're kind of seeing the whole assembly here uh, just imagine if this were drywall. This is kind of what we're going after. So um, where we're at right now for the bulk of the basement is that um, the foam has been glued. We've prepped the plastic on the floor and this along the top. There are also these funky top sections. You can just see it in the shadow. Right about there, you see the transition where it's lighter over there and darker over there. And that's because there's a cap piece that goes on top of all of these pieces as well. I haven't done the cap in here, but I have done the cap out here. So that goes right up. It's capping the surface of the concrete walls, that, that top. Um, it's on the same plane as the sill plates. Um, and so it was, it needed a rabbit all the way down it, which is a pain in the butt, but I took the time and I did it. Um, so it's a nice tight fit. The last thing that's going to happen here, so you can see there's a tight gap. Um, plus we'd like to, come on, focus. We'd like to tighten it up against the joists as well. So I'm going to spray foam inside there. It'll just tighten everything up and I'll tape it after I spray foam it. Um, and it'll snug everything together. So this is the, uh, the foam on the walls that you're seeing. The basement is quieter now. It's been cut open in a couple of places because there's a pipe that's gonna go through here and a gasket that needs to be sealed in behind it. It gets sealed to the wall for um, air barrier and then we'll patch in the foam right there. Same thing down here. You can see this this one is all prepped and ready to go. I'm ready to hang Intello through the actually this whole section of the basement now. Um, so that's why the plastic is taped up to the wall there and I'll hang it from the top and tape all that and drape it down and tape it right along just above the floor there. Um, you can kind of see the detail on the corner. There is this very sticky weatherproof tape um, with glove. It's, it's kind of like duct tape, but it's, it doesn't behave like duct tape. It is really difficult actually to work with and super sticky and that's great. And then behind it, Kind of like we did outside, it has caulking in all those corners where it's difficult to get a perfect seal with all this plastic. Um, so 
that's all sealed up from the bottom and when I tape it I'm not going to cut a seam of the Intello it's just gonna wrap right in and so I'll just be able to tape that nice and clean on all those inside corners. I'm gonna have to do something similar to down here up above with the Intello and just cut it carefully, seam it, um, tape those seams and then I'll be able to wrap right around that corner. This is the uh, where our sewer is running out. Um, so same thing, it's gonna get a gasket all the way around it, air seal it, and we'll come behind and clean that up. The Intello at that point will just kind of get temporarily cut away and then laid back out and taped taped off when it's uh, when it's good to go. This whole section is done. Nice and white, nice and bright in here. All these seams just kind of butt together, um, but they're nice and tight. So same treatment on the inside corner here with that sticky tape and it's a nice good seal along with the caulking on the floor. I gotta address that up top still. Actually this section needs a cap too. So I guess we got a little bit more of cap to do before we can run the Intello but I'm hoping that we can run Intello in the next day or two. So my task tonight it's about 3.30, and I want to do the rest of these walls before dinner, get them all hung. And then tomorrow morning I can work on the caps. I'll probably do them in the shop. Um, it's easier to cut this stuff. This is These are the boards here that are going on these walls. And uh, I'll give you an update when we're done and ready to hang in Tello. I'll give you a, a take, take you on another tour as soon as that is done. Uh, the block wall is almost done. That is going to be supporting the brick up above um, in the family room and then again above the family room for the, the whole exterior of the house here. There's a big gap here and obviously it needs to be supported. Um, if you remember when we poured the foundation, it's a big footer underneath this section. So it's, it's supported properly all the way up. One weird thing that's going on here is that we need to get air in um, air conditioning and HVAC, <laughs> a trunk line in here for the family room above. We're not really going to do anything for HVAC downstairs. It should just be all the time, pretty much like 60, 65 degrees down here with all the insulation. So we'll see once those mechanicals get in. If anything, we'll need to ventilate a little bit to cool it down, probably. Um, but we're gonna see about that. We do need that trunk to pass through somewhere. I don't think that's gonna be the final location. I don't think the mason's gonna want that because there's supposed to be a header, a steel beam going across there, and he's gonna to have to head over that as well. I don't know if he's gonna to wanna to put it smack dab on top of this opening and just do one hider up above, up a little higher. That kind of would suck because then that drops the ceiling across the hole. That would kind of, you know, if it's right there, we could just do a little soffit right here and just a small bump down because the furnace is going to be all the way over there. If it's over here, kind of same thing. Maybe we can tuck it right in here. And actually that's better for using this room because we could continue that soffit right along here and anywhere that it needs to go to the other side of the room it's got these joist bays to to move that way so be one small soffit in here and probably just make a faux soffit on that side to make it symmetrical again um, but we'll see um, my best guess is that that box for the HVAC trunk is going to move over there and then they'll have to run it along here and do like one little snaky thing to get through I also don't think that trunk needs to be that big in that location. I feel like that's the size it's going to be for most of it. But at the end, those trunks usually are smaller. So I'd like to, well, stay tuned. We'll see what happens here. But I'm, I'm betting that a slightly smaller box gets placed right in here. 
and that way the header is separate from whatever has to head this off up above. But we'll see. Stay tuned and you'll find out. Talk to you soon.